What's up, f***ers? So by now, you probably have all seen my little short video, Alice Cupcake, and if you haven't, you should go watch it, because um, the context of that video is what inspired this tutorial today. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Tyler Seaman. I am a DaVinci Resolve YouTuber. I dabble in Blender sometimes when my computer allows it. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to composite a green screened asset into a new environment using 3D. So quick disclaimer to this video, um, this particular example, we're using a static shot, which means there's no movement. So this can actually be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, as far as I know. Um, if you wanted to track a moving shot though, for something like this, the best way to do that is with the 3D camera tracker, and that is a studio only feature. And just another slight addendum, this video is gonna be a little bit different than all my other tutorials because I'm actually gonna walk you through how to do this in real time. So there's gonna be a lot of uhs, there's gonna be a lot of ums, and there might even be some slip ups of the tongue, the slip up of the tongue, kinda like that one. So bear with me, but it's good stuff, so. Keep, keep a little. So here we are in a brand new timeline in DaVinci. Um, this is my project from when I actually edited the Alice Cupcake short video. Uh, but I made a new timeline, 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS. And I've only got two pieces of media. So I've got my environment here, which is the where I'm gonna composite my, my little tiny self. And, um, and then the green screen right here. Uh, the green screen is not well lit. I was in my house and I was trying to film this. I had to kick my kids out of the house with my wife to film this in our living room. So I didn't have much time to light, so I did the best I could. Um, and also I filmed in a nine by 16 aspect ratio. And that's actually a, uh, a tip that I learned from another fellow YouTuber who's a game review channel. He goes by Manly Reviews. Um, and if you're into video games or if you're just into awesome edited videos, my favorite drink is battery acid. <laughs> go check him out because his stuff is masterful. He's got a Patreon too, which shows how he does all the stuff in the disgusting inferior Adobe After Effects. <laughs> Filming this in a uh, nine by 16, it uh, eliminates all this unneeded real estate basically. Um, so I was able just to focus on the actual green screen when I com when I delta keyed it out basically. So um, you probably noticed that this is short and this is incredibly long. Um, it always helps to have an excess of clean plate. So you always want to have more than you need. So you can never film too much clean plate. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to key this out. So we're going to just hover our playhead over. You know, it could be anywhere as long as it's touching the uh, the clip you want. Hover the playhead over the clip that you want to um, to composite with or just to mess around with and go into the fusion page. So you can see here by looking at the top right that this is filmed in 2160 by 3840 and that's nine by 16, it's vertical. What we're gonna do is we're going to bring in a Delta keyer. So, we're gonna take this, uh, take a pipe from the media in and plug it into the background input of the Delta Keyer. I'm gonna select it and press one to bring it up in the first viewer. So when we're uh, doing some, when we're doing Delta Keying here in Fusion, my favorite practice is to just automatically, you know, click in the first viewer and press A to bring up the alpha channel. Um, and this helps a lot when selecting your colors and helping to um, refine the mat. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So here in our Delta Keyer, make sure we have it selected and up in the inspector over here, uh, it says background color right here in the key section, background color. We're gonna grab this little eyedropper. We're gonna click and drag and we're gonna drag it over the green. So now pay attention in viewer one, how everything's changing. That's because the black is what is being keyed out. So what you wanna do is you wanna drag around until there's the most black that you can get as much black in the background as you can. And that's pretty good right there. So I release and that's what our key background color is set at. Oh my God, I just scrolled. Okay. Ah, well, I had a dummy dingus moment. Anyways, we're all good. <sighs> um. Anyways, as I was scrolling in before I f***ed everything up, you can see that the key is not quite perfect. We've got these pixels that are kind of showing everywhere and it's grainy. And as we play through, you can see that there's like a bunch of noise, you know, cameras film and there's, there's noise. If you don't have, uh, if you don't have perfect ISO and perfect lighting, which I didn't, I told you already. Um, but that's not a problem because what we can do is we can come over here 
in the matte tab, first off, we can clean the foreground up and that's the white. The white is the foreground. So we can boost up to clean the foreground and you can see some of the pixels, the little pixel from the noise are starting to go away. So that's at zero and that's at, eh, let's say like zero, zero or point zero, zero two, which is all right. Cause you don't want to go too, too heavy with the clean, the foreground. I know it seems like it would be, it would make sense to just clean it completely or clean it completely rather, but you can see if you maximize it, that you start to lose some of your edge and that's not what we want. So, so point zero, zero two, I think was where we were at, which was okay. And then we can do the same thing with the background, which as you might guess is the black. So we're just going to boost the black a bit and you can see that some of the, some of the, some of the pixels in the back are starting to disappear as well. And again, we don't want to go too, too heavy with it. So the next, next mode of, uh, refinement, I guess you could say is to play with the threshold sliders here. So when I grab from the, the bottom threshold slider and I boost it, you can see that it refines the black, which is the background. So I'm going to boost until I have like what is basically perfect black. That doesn't fix our white problem though, which is right here. We fix that by grabbing the high slider and bringing it down. And you can see here that we have <clears throat> a perfect black and white image here. And that's going to be our mat. And that is how DaVinci knows what to cut out from the green screen. You might notice that this is our final our final image and it's not working on the final image that's just because we're in a separate branch if we just connect this to the media out there you go you have alpha in our final you might notice that uh oh we've still got some uh, leftovers from you know where the, uh, the other places that weren't um that weren't covered by the green screen that's okay we can fix that pretty easy what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a polygon node down and we're going to mask these little areas out. I'm going to plug it into the uh, the garbage mat. This little gray input is the garbage mat, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. That's That tells the Delta Keyer, hey, all this data, just get rid of it outright. We're not gonna use it, and it replaces it with alpha. So anyways, now that we've got it plugged into our garbage mat, we're just gonna start doing a rough, rough mask on what is, oh, you can see there's a little bit of fuzziness up here. I'm gonna go back into the Delta here and I'm just gonna refine that some more by bringing up the black level. That looks pretty good. All right, anyways, back in the polygon node, I'm gonna select and continue my mask. So, uh oh, that's not what we wanted to do. It masked out our, our body. That's okay. Simple fix. Just go into the polygon node, click the invert button, and there we go. We've got our little cut cut out. So anyways, you might you might notice that actually we got a pretty we did a pretty good job on this one now that I'm thinking about it. However, there is a a slight edge to uh to my ear, my my bald ass head right here. And uh, we can refine that a little bit further if we wanted to by using the erode dilate uh, slider here. So I'm gonna go left for erode just to kind of uh, bring that edge down a bit. And uh, see, that's looking pretty good. Um, but however, we don't want it to be too sharp. So we can restore a bit of the fringe by bringing this up slightly. You can see that it kind of blurs it. So that's no fringe. And that just gives it a little bit of blurriness and that just kind of that it's more pleasing to the human eye at least so now we're keyed out and go back to our edit page it looks like we got a pretty good key so you can see yep yep blah 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 so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to take this bring it over yeah well my tracks got a little bit messed up that's okay bring it over my environment so you can see that this is what we want, but the problem is like it's two separate tracks. We want it to be on the same track and that's easy to do. You can just come over here, um, control B to, to blade tool to make them the same size. And then uh, box select both, right click, and then new fusion clip. So that combines both pieces of media into the same clip. Now, 
our little man disappear, but that's okay. It's just a slight bug with Fusion that it kind of just throws them out of order. Um, so let me show you what I mean. Here we are in Fusion, in the new Fusion clip. Um, yellow is background, so the yellow is our environment. And then Media 2 here, that's, that's us. That's our little man. Whoops, fat fingered it. That's a little man. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these. So we've got our media in where we want it. Um, but like I said, we're going to use 3D to composite this in. So first things first, I'm going to select both of these and shift, hold shift and click to drag it off so that that's, you know, we disappear basically. First things first, I'm going to delete this merge note because I don't need it right now. Now that we've got all our media in there and uh, named and organized, separated and so forth, we're going to build a 3D scene. So we're going to push shift, we're going to push shift space rather, and we're going to put in an image. I've done this three times already, but we're going to bring in an image plane 3D. So the image plane is what is going to, uh, to show our man in 3D space. So what we do is we plug the, the little man media into the foreground of the image plane. You can bring it up in uh, the first viewer and you can see this is it in uh, in 3D space. So we've got our image plane set up, but we're, uh, we're gonna hold off on that for just a second because the first thing we're gonna need besides the image plane is we're gonna need a camera 3D node. So you can see that pop up in 3D space. Um, we're going to put it off, you know, a little bit off center here and we're going to you can, you can select it or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just easier if you do. Uh, select the camera 3D, shift space, and we're going to enter merge 3D. So you can view that in the first viewer. And then this is what the merge looks like. We don't have uh, the little man here because the little man is not connected. So go, you can go ahead and connect the little man if you want. And here we are in 3D space. Boom, right there. So the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a render 3D node. Render 3D. The render 3D node, uh, 3D node rather, is what we can connect to the 2D comp, and that's basically how we merge it over, merge 3D over 2D. Oop. So we're gonna grab here, merge it back over, and uh, well, we don't see them. What's going on here? Simply, it's because the camera is right up here, all up in my guts, right up in there. You can basically see what I had for breakfast that day. Uh, so we're going to make sure you have the camera selected and you can either use the translation or rotation controls here in the inspector, or you can just use these arrows. So I'm just gonna grab this and uh, pull him back. And you can see, whoa, I'm gonna zoom out a bit because uh, a bit, yep. Yeah. And that, I think, I'm pretty sure that's about, that's pretty close to how small I was. So I'm basically going to use the camera to position my character in the scene. So I'm going to adjust slightly just to, I, until I got him in a spot where I think he looks good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now we've got him positioned. Um, so you might notice there's a slight problem. He's looking pretty good in the scene so far, but um, the my brother's got no shadow. Got to have shadow. We're not a vampire. We're not a we're not a ghost. Got to have shadow. So how do we do that? In 3D, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to shift space, shape 3D. So if you look in the shape 3D's inspector, you can see by default, the shape is a plane and that's what we want. We need a plane. So you can go ahead and connect the shape 3D into the merge node. It's the wrong orientation. And it looks all weird because the, the infinitely small image plane and the infinitely small, or I'm sorry, the infinitely flat shape plane are occupying the same space and that causes these artifacts. Simple fix, you can just click on the shape 3D, go into the transform little section here and, um, on the X axis, you can type in 90 and that rotates it 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
use these handles because I have the shape 3D net, uh, node selected. I'm gonna use these handles to position and I can even get in super close if I want and uh, get the, the plane to get down to about my foot level. Now it's not perfect because we're not standing perfectly flat on. So like if we were to create a shadow this way, um, the foot, the shadow of the this foot would be touching, but the shadow of this foot wouldn't be anywhere near it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the leading lines of the scene to help position the ground plane. So I'm gonna do this by altering the rotational values of the image or the, the shape 3D plane. So I've, I've pretty much got my X where I want it. I'm going to adjust the Y and then I can adjust the Z for a bit. It's, it's going to take a little bit of adjustment, just like playing around with it and trying to figure out the best, the best fit. Maybe I'll bring up the scale is what I'll do, because I'll bring up the scale. Yeah, that looks all right. So the leading line is still a little bit off. And then we can we can refine this in post when we actually have our shadow. So, so that's looking pretty good. We've got our, we've got our plane set and this was, uh, just to give it a look basically. Okay. So we've got it to a relatively basic 3d scene. So this is what we want. Our next step is we're going to copy everything right here. We're not going to copy the shape 3d. We're going to copy everything except the shape 3d and we're going to paste it. Well, I didn't copy it, it looks like. Control C, Control V, there we go. So we're gonna copy all of these and we're going to whoop, merge them over in front of our little man uh, merge right here. And the reason we do that is because this is going to be our shadow. Okay, so if we view this in isolated view, like say we, uh, Say we uh, control P on this merge here, that turns off the sh that turns off the shape 3D. It turns off all this stuff that we did prior. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab the shift, uh, or I'm sorry, the shape 3D. Shift click, drag down. So we're going to merge the shape uh, 3D here over this merge. So we're still seeing this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our render 3D here and we're going to enable lighting and we're gonna enable shadows. So it goes perfectly black. Why is that? Well, we don't have any light in our scene. So to do or to fix that, we're going to shift space, type in spotlight. There's our spotlight, we're gonna connect it to the merge. Nothing's happening because we need to position our light. So, whoa, there we go. Um, we're, we're, our light is uh, affecting our little man but it's not affecting anything else. So let me position this and I will tell you why in just a second. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my light roughly where I want it. Um, you can see our little man is being like completely blown out by the light and our ground plane, which is the shape 3D plane, um, nothing's happening to that. Why is that? Well, we have to do some messing around in the materials of each object. So firstly, we're going to go into the shape 3D and we're going to go into the, oh, I'm already in it. Go into the material section down here to transmittance. We uh, have received lighting and we have received shadows. We don't want it to receive lighting. So when we turn that off, the light is, you know, it doesn't register that light is hitting it. So it goes back to pure white. So you can probably guess what we're gonna do with our image plane 3D. We gotta do basically the same thing. Go into the material settings and under transmittance, we're gonna say receives lighting. We're gonna uncheck that. So our little guy goes back to normal and we're gonna uncheck shadows because we don't want the man to receive the shadows. We just want the ground plane to receive the shadows. Okay, so now that we've got our materials all set up, um, you'll notice that there's no shadow. Well, that's only because the position of the light. Um, our light, oop, if you can see right here, our light and our camera are going in the same direction. 
so it's not possible for the camera to see the shadows so we adjust the side adjust the spotlight direction right here you want to make sure you're uh, either in the merge or in the spotlight i'm going to go jump into the spotlight just so i can have these controls and i'm going to adjust the rotation of the light and you can see as i do that the shadow starts to show up it doesn't look like look quite right but that's because i just need to mess around with the i have to mess around with the position of the light Okay, so I did some slight micro adjustments to the plane and to the shadow just because I needed to get it to fit a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's sitting a little bit prettier and that's what I like. So the problem is we've still got our man showing in this layer because don't forget, this is only supposed to be the shadow layer. This is gonna be our, our man layer and then this is the shadow layer. So the way we fix that is we bring out our image plane 3D and our media source and we're going to shift space and we're going to enter in an override 3d node right here so with that connected we're going to come in here and uh under visibility we're going to check do unseen by cameras and then double check unseen by cameras and that makes our man disappear come back over here and we're going to unhide our other man layer so with that all done this is truly just the shadow layer and then this is the man layer so to get rid of this white ground plane all we're going to do is we're going to come into our shadow merge and come over to the apply mode and we're going to set it to multiply and then you can see we've got our ground plane disappeared all except for the shadow so another thing you'll notice is that our shadow is looking a little bit sharp a little bit sharp for my taste that's okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come down here into the spotlight and we're gonna in the controls tab we're gonna come down here to this shadows drop down so all the way at the bottom we've got softness and it's set to none we want it to be variable so you can see right here it does a calculation where it shows the shadow getting softer the further away it gets from the casting subject so now that we've got our shadow looking a little bit more natural with the blur and everything, um, you'll notice that the, the feet aren't touching. And that's okay because we can still fix that with, um, well, by selecting the renderer 3D shift space, and we're gonna add in a transform node. Now there's a transform and there's a transform 3D. Since we're connecting from the renderer, uh, since we're going after the renderer 3D, that is what converts the 3D data into 2D space. So um, that's why we're using a regular transform and not a transform 3D, because it's technically 2D space now. Anyways, so now that we've got the transform set, I'm just gonna adjust the center little by little. So it doesn't look absolutely perfect, but that's okay because if if it's a little bit too far off, we can come in and we can mess with our light source again and try and get our shadow to fit better. So after some repositioning of the spotlight and of the actual whole shadow, uh, shadow merge itself, uh, we've got it looking pretty decent. Um, it would be a little bit tougher to get away with this if it was a tracked moving shot, so on and so forth. Um, but since it's static and it's not moving, you can get away with little things like this. Um, however, if you take special notice, the shadow of the man and the shadow of the book here, they're not the same. The shadow of the man's a bit darker. And we fix this by going into our shadow merge and coming into the settings. You know, usually you'll start off here in the merge. We'll go into the settings and we'll drop the blend down until the shadows match somewhat. All right, so that's basically it. We've got our little man composited on. We've got our shadow. We're not going to worry about color grading because that's just completely to your taste. Um, however, we can jump into the edit page and I forgot to turn on smart cache. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let it render out for a bit. So I ended up doing a render in place because OBS running and uh, trying to render smart cache was making my uh, encoding overload. So, hey, Puget. 
If you wanted to send a small YouTuber a computer, hit your boy up. So anyways, as you can see, after I did the render in place, the shadow, while not perfect, is still passable. And you can see that it moves along with our image plane 3D, AKA our little man. And it looks beautiful. Would look even better with some color thrown on. You know what, actually let me throw on a quick color grade just to show you. And there we have it. There's our fully composited green screen asset into a new environment with shadows using a 3D environment completely in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Boom! But what if I told you there was another way to composite shadows in a scene like this without using 3D? Well, it's true. Check this out. Okay, so now we've got our media all uh, labeled and arranged properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the Tyler layer or the man layer, or wh whichever you're compositing. Click it and we're going to shift space and add in a transform node or XF, transform. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do, make sure you have your transform node selected, is we're gonna go over to this little, um, this pivot value here. We've got X and Y. We're gonna drop the Y just a little bit until we see this green arrow, that's the pivot. So grab the pivot and we're gonna bring it all the way down to the lowest part of the uh, v uh, visible pixel data. So I uh, moved it on the X axis a little bit. So I'm gonna reset that and I'm gonna go down, you know, you can uh, click inside this little box here and uh, drag for more precise movements. You can push uh, shift. Um, so that looks, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty much at the bottom. Um, so anyways, we're going to adjust the size and you can see that when we adjust, it's going in the direction of that pivot point. It makes sizing a lot easier. So I'm gonna drop the size down just a bit and just try and match it to like however big the, uh, the last character was in proportion because this is a bit of a different shot. And um, then I'm gonna grab this. This is the, uh, the center value and we're gonna drag to the right, the correct position that we want. And that's, that's pretty good right there. Maybe I'll drop the size down just a little bit. Okay, so now we've got our character sized right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the, the transform node and the media source node, which is Tyler. And we're going to control C and we're gonna control V to paste them. So what we're gonna do is we're going to merge both of these back over the timeline under the, uh, the, Tyler, the, the first instances of these nodes. And uh, I'm gonna rename this shadow merge and what we're going to do after this is we're going to first off i'm going to turn this off so we can you know control p to pass through the node disable it so we're not looking at the uh, actual tyler uh, first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to leave this transform alone um, but i'm going to select it and then after it i'm going to put in a brightness contrast node so after our brightness contrast node over our shadow branch, we're going to shift space and add a DVE node. So a DVE node is kind of like 2.5D. It's, it's basically like faking 3D. What we want to do is we're going to take our pivot of our DVE node, which is this green, this green X here. You can't really get to it. So you can kind of like just adjust it to where it gets free from the center and then drag it all the way down to the most, the lowest, point of the pixel data and then we're going to adjust the rotation of our character ever so slightly and when you've got your shadow position to where you want it to be it's not perfect again that's fine because after because after all that we can add in a blur node and we can blur the size to look just like that. And you can see that, you know, it's not lining up with the feet absolutely perfectly, but if it really bothers you, you can go back into your DVE node and alter the rotation just a bit. Maybe not that. Make sure you know your values. I, I constantly have a problem with this. Since we're using just regular merges on this one, we can just simply look at the shadow of the book. And then same as we did before, drop down whoop, the blend to match. And since this is just basically a copy, of the actual character data, it still moves along 
with the footage. So anyways, that's it. That is two, count them, two separate ways you can composite green screened assets into a new environment using 3D or 2.5D or fake 3D, if you will. Thanks very much for watching. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I've just been kind of busy with being a dad, life, and, you know, all this other stuff. Um, but I hope you stick around. I got some good stuff planned in the future. But I guess I will just wrap up this video by uh, quoting the great 50 Cent. 